morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, advent of code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc unedited video uh, where I can get surprised that Erlang is maybe a useful choice for some of these problems. Uh, as we've seen on day 11, the little encode interpreter working with message passing kind of is a really good fit. And that turns out to be more painful in different languages. Uh, that was generally different. Uh, in the previous year, I've done this, where it was just suffering uh, to have to do, you know, mutation heavy stuff into uh, a language that didn't bring any benefit in such cases. So today is day 12, and we got a little planet here. The n body problem, oh god, the n body problem is uh, gravity calculations and everything that's usually very math heavy and updates heavy. So, just as I made the um, introduction about Erlang being a good fit, it might hurt us a bit this time around. After a brief scan, you calculate the position of each moon, your puzzle input. You just need to simulate their motion so that you can avoid them. Each moon has a three-dimensional position, x, y, and z, or z, and a three-dimensional velocity. The position of each moon is given in your scan. The x, y, and z velocity of each moon starts at zero. Okay. So they all start at zero velocity. All right. Simulate the motion of the moons in time step. Within each time step, first update the velocity of every moon by applying gravity. Then, once all the moon's velocities have been updated, okay, update the position of every moon by applying the velocity to their positions. Time progresses by one step once all of the positions are updated. Okay. So this might not be too hurtful from that point of view. Um, but we'll see what we can get. Okay, time progresses by one step once all the positions are updated. Okay, to apply gravity, consider every pair of moons. Okay, so that's going to be kind of costly. On each axis, x, y, and z, the velocity of each moon changes by exactly plus one or minus one to pull the moons together. For example, if Ganymede has a position uh, of three on the x-axis and Callisto is five on the same axis, then Ganymede changes plus one because five. Okay, so okay, if the position, so that's not the actual, you know, n-body problem. Like the three-body problem would be, which I believe is super expensive. It's kind of a simpler version that gives me hope. Uh, to apply the gravity, consider every pair of moons. Okay, yeah, I've read that one. And minus one because three is smaller than five. So the greatest one is keeping on with the position it had. The other one is attracted closer to the other one. If the positions on a given axis are the same, the velocity on that axis does not change for that pair of moons. Okay. Once all gravity has been applied, apply velocity. Simply add the velocity of each moon to its own position. For example, if I revoke, okay, 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 okay. So we've got a little test for that one. X, blah, 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 blah. Is this what my input looks like? Then it might, okay, so those are all the steps. I'm going to make use of that for sure. Then it might help to calculate the total energy in the system. The total energy in a single moon is its potential energy multiplied by its kinetic energy. A moon's potential energy is the sum of absolute values of its xy decay. Kinetic is the sum of the potential. Okay. So that's, okay. Kind of easy to do because you just have to add all the things together and multiply. Total energy after 10 steps. Okay. Here's a second example. At least they're very detailed on that thing. And the sum is 1940. Get the puzzle and put. Okay, so they are really maps, and those are all the bodies, one body per line, I assume. Uh, day 12. Only four of them, so you know it's going to be expensive to do because that is a small input. Uh, those are only position, we assume all the velocities are zero, I believe. So. Wait, is it because they're asking me a crap load of steps? A thousand steps. Okay. 
I think we can make that fast enough uh, if the tests go according to plan with what I had. But we'll see. Okay. So, example, as usual. Although I, I could do it with a test. Uh, I assume that those are going to be kind of expensive. I'm not sure that I'm going to need to run this later. So I'm going to start with something simple anyway. <laughs> All right. Oop. All right, and so. Uh, I will create the velocity and speed. You know what? This is one of the things where uh, Erlang records might actually be useful. We don't use them a whole lot, uh, but I'm going to use one for the position, and I'm not naming them to be super useful, and I'm not giving them type information, but this is going to be the position. Let me use the same terms they're using in there. Yeah, P for position and V for velocity. And that will just avoid me being confused on a few things. And actually for velocity, we know that the default values are all zero. So that's going to make it a bit easier that way. So for each of them, uh, string like seems the string on a line break. And so this will give me, each one of them is going to be a moon in there. The little parser is going to be annoying to write for that. So uh, just parse a moon for each string that I get out of this. And this is going to be all of them. I'm going to start with just this. Sparse a moon is going to necessarily uh, they could have multiple digits. Uh, let's start something. Do I have uh, two integer? How does it work with something like minus one, two, three? That works. Okay. So if I start with the first one x is equal to something and then that's the interesting part right if i do x is equal to minus one two three something like that it's not going to work but if i break that bit then i'm going to get exactly what i need here which is a recursive function for uh, the rest of it actually okay so parsing the moon with a string will require me to get uh, x, y, z value for parse moon, the string, and uh, I'm going to start with just an empty tuple. And um, I'll, I'll figure something out from there, but my final moon should be uh, P record, oops, for X. That way. And I will couple that with the velocity record at its default value for each one of them. So I will know, for example, yeah, I should be, I actually don't need to. It doesn't matter for this, I just need an accumulator. Uh, and I know I don't even need it on the first one because this is going to be uh, the X call for the first one. Uh, string to integer of the rest of the string is going to give me my X value on, it's just that way because this is going to be the rest of the string. Uh, 
And if I look there, it gives me the space and the kava and everything. So I can just parse the moon on the rest. And now I know I have like that. If I parse the moon. And what I have is a comma, a space, a y, and an equal. You know what? Just going to make it slightly less painful because I know the structure of all the steps. They're dictated by the format I have, so y rest is going to be equal to string to integer of the string again. And I can parse the moon for the rest, and I have x and y. And then I can finish on parse moon of uh, equal of x and y. And that's going to give me, uh, I don't care about the rest. And I return x, y. And Z. And so let's see what this gives us. Why is it complaining? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Compile. Day 12 example. So I get minus zero one. Let's me uh, load the record definition. There we go. So minus one zero two minus one zero two two minus ten seven two minus ten seven four minus eight eight four minus eight eight and then three five one three five minus one and that works okay I've got my input sorted out for this uh, and then uh, the thing I'm going to want to do is after zero steps okay I should be good that's what I wanted. I'm going to do to do something like steps. I'm going to do one step of all of these, and I'm just going to go straight with that. And so the steps function, if I'm at zero, then I just return the list. And that is uh, going to be my thing. If I'm at step n, here's the interesting thing. So now I need to uh, steps n minus one apply step to the list and this can be done in an absolutely body recursive way uh, because what they asked us to do in the problem definition here is um, we have to consider every pair of moons right so we only update all the velocities and then only apply them at oh yeah so apply uh, it would be update velocities and then apply and then just uh, I'm just going to call it update V and then update P on the entire list so what I can do for the updating of velocities once the list is over I'm done uh, but because I only need to handle each pair once in each of the lists uh, the thing I will be able to do is take the first one compare it to all the ones after and update all the ones after as well uh, but all the ones after will have had the content of the first one updated so I, I and then I can do the rest of the list and what this lets me do is make sure that I only process each moon once uh, well each moon pair once because I will drop them as I go so actually the first moon here is going to be um, HP and HV and then the rest is the tail of the list. Uh, but essentially I will need to get, uh, I believe, mm. oh wait. Here's an interesting one. Do I need to apply each of the updates one by one? Or, yeah, I think it should be regardless of the status there. So let's see. Here's the interesting thing. I've got the velocity of three here, which means I had 
plus one on each of them because it's the smallest x. Uh, here I got the minus one here, and that's because there are two smaller ones and one bigger one. Okay. Yeah, it's based on the position that updates the velocity. That's safe. Okay. Uh, but I need to update the ones of all the other ones at the same time as I do mine. So that's going to... Um, Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have uh, new H and then uh, new T, which is going to be all the tail of all the things. And I'm just going to use this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a thing for uh, new H's. New T is going to be fine. And what I'm going to do is um, V, and it's going to take new two arguments, H and moon for each moon in the tail. And then what I'm going to have is... Uh, of new H's into a single velocity. And then I will apply update V to the rest of the new tail. So this maybe, hopefully this makes sense to you because I've just planned a few moves uh, ahead just like that. But what I'm going to do essentially is each moon is going to be uh, for the H. So I'm just going to call H um, And this is a position, so uh, y is y a and z is a for the record a, and this is going to be uh, And I'm going to update all the velocities. Uh, I'm not applying. I'm not updating the positions, but I need this. It's fine. Um, and then for a v is going to be record v of x because I don't need to know about the velocity of the other one. I'm going to be able to do it that way in the tuple. And I will compare this to v p. So x, oops, xb, y is yb, is zb, and uh, I don't care for its velocity. And that's going to be my two pairs. So um, for this one then, for each of these, so uh, okay, so I'm going to compare each of the values is going to have the same comparison, so that's going to uh, anyway. xa2 and uh, Oh, it's I'm going to flip them around and AX and BX is now going to be the comparison of XA and XB. Now I replace X with Y. Then I replace the small x with a small y. And I do the same thing, but uh, with z letter. And then what I can return is x is ax, y is ay.
Oh, I can't sum them just that way because I need to consider the old value I had on them. Wait, no, I'm not updating the positions on these. Okay, never mind. I, I'm getting myself confused. Uh, the velocities I don't care about. I just apply the new ones, which means that here. All right, this is this is going to be fine. Yeah, I can't do it with um, this application here. It can be an unzip thing. It will need to be. Um, recursive function for the update V. So I'm going to be doing, um, I can probably do it with a fold anyway. So let me see. So for each, this I have, I'm going to apply it to the T. I'm going to get uh, a moon. I'm going to get the H uh, state, sure, and I'm going to get, that's all I have. I'm going to carry a new tail. And for each of them, I want to apply update V of H in the moon, and that's going to give me Okay, so I'm going to just apply directly fun. Hmm. So I'm going to get one new element, which is the moon I'm comparing to. And what I'm going to carry around is a new tail and a new H state. So for this, I'm just going to, you know what, apply directly H to moon. That's the H state, actually, the moon, and I'll carry the tail. And I will apply this to what is essentially initially H and an empty tail, and I will submit the entire tail of the function to it. Then I will no longer need to do this, it will just be, oops, what did I end up doing? Okay, this is just going to be new H. And I'm going to apply it to the rest of them. So here I do have this record here, and now I have an accumulator. That is going to be fine. Okay, so now I have my own state, the AV. I need to update the velocity that I had here to be x plus x y is equal to y. Uh, I'll need to do it also with this one because I need to update its velocity at the same time. This is going to be kind of annoying, so let me work at this differently. Uh. Ava, so here I'm going to do AX, AY, AZ. And this is going to be my new AP state. And then in the accumulator, I'm going to add um, BP and then add velocities of the BV, BX. B Y and B Z to the accumulator. And here, uh, if you notice, I'm going to flip my accumulator each time, but it shouldn't be a problem how many times I flip it because that's not the core of the uh, algorithm there. So I'm going to have to need to compare. So if X and X are the same, I return zero. If uh, X and Y are that way, when 
x is smaller than y, then I, oh, that should be 0 and 0. Then I'm going to return minus 1 and 1. Let me just come double check this. Change plus 1 because 5 is greater than 3. Yep. Callisto is a position of 5. Ganymede's velocity, oh, and Callisto. Okay, so the velocity changed by exactly minus 1. If Ganymede has a position of x, that is at 3, and okay, so Ganymede has 3, and it increases because it is smaller. Good thing I double check. Because if it is smaller, it increases, otherwise, it decreases. All right, and then it's going to be just the opposite of that on this case, where it's going to be minus one and plus one. And that's my comparison. And add velocities, it's going to be, um, all right. The velocities of x zero. <sighs> And I'm going to I hate naming these. Uh, screw this. We're going for simple. I can't name it that way. Uh, it's uh, just a velocity. And the reason I'm doing this is that if at any point in time, like in part two, I need to add a new field to one of these, then I won't need to rewrite my entire things. X plus X2. Because I'm not dropping the record underground on every rotation. And I fit into the 80 lines flush on this. Okay, so I have the comparison, the update velocities. Um, what I need now is update the position. I'm going to put it here, update the position, because I'm putting them in the order they are somewhat getting called. Um, so updating the positions for all of these, now I have all the velocities. Updating the positions was a question of applying the velocity to what they had. So that one should be kind of simpler. Uh, oh, do the velocities keep adding up? That's the thing. I, yeah, we'll see. We'll compare the first step and see. Uh, so for each of them, it's going to be uh, no apply velocities to each moon in the moon list. And that should be it. So apply velocities. We're going to. Oh yeah, that's a little problem here because I. Uh, yeah, I'm only working in the velocities, but here I'm not going to be. So here I'm going to be. Let me actually clear this. Why is why? And then for this one, I'm going to have the velocity. I'm going to call it that way. Uh, but I'm going to add xv, yv, and it's going to be this in v. And this is in a tuple. And what I'm going to return is p x, x plus xv. And I return the unchanged velocity. Now this might work. Uh, recall the A12, the record definitions have not changed. And so at step one, I should get two minus one, one, two minus, whoops. Step one, two minus one, one, and then three minus one, minus one. And that is 
3, minus 1, minus 1. Here I have 2, 2, 0, and minus 1, minus 3, 1. 2, 2, 0, minus 1, minus 3, 1. That's okay. I don't care for the order on these, because frankly the moons are unnamed. I just need to find the right ones. So 3, minus 7, minus 4, and 1, 3, 3. 3, minus 7, minus 4, 1, 3, 3. Okay. Uh, and then 1, minus 7, 5, minus 3, minus uh, 1, minus 3. 3, minus 7, minus... No, that's not the one. It's... Uh, I got one of them that's not good. And it's the first one in the list, I think. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, wait, so... Let me see. I had 220. Two, two, okay, 220 two, minus 1 minus 3, 1. 220 two, minus 1 minus 3, 1. And then I get... 3 minus 7 minus 4, 3 minus 7 minus 4, and that one is 1, 3, 3, that one is 1, 3, 3, okay, I had misread, 1 minus 7, 5, 1 minus 7, 5, that is going minus 3, 1 minus 3, minus 3, 1 minus 3, this is good, uh, I'm going to go for the 10th step in there, and only validate that one with the example to make sure that I've got the right thing. So, example on this one, on the tenth step, I've got 2, 1, minus 3, first one. And I got 2, 1, minus 3 is still the first one there, so I might get the right order. And minus 3, minus 2, 1. And here I have... Mm, oops. Minus 3, minus 2, 1. Okay, minus 3, minus 2, 1. I got a little alarm and that made me forget the numbers. 204. 204. That one gives me 1 minus 1 minus 1. So 204, 1 minus 1 minus 1. That is good. Uh, 1 minus 8, 0. 1 minus 8, 0. That works. Minus 1, 1, 3. Minus 1, 1, 3. And then 3 minus 6, 1. 3 minus 6, 1 gives me 3, 2 minus 3, 3, 2 minus 3. Okay, so we've got something that works on this little three-body problem. So now we will want the kinetic energy to be the sum of the absolute values of its velocities and coordinates. Okay, so let's define these. Because then we're going to have the... Uh, Potential is going to be based on the sum of the absolutes of positions. Oh, absolutes, yeah, okay. So that's going to be x, x, y is y, is m. And so that's going to be the absolute of x. And those are the sums, right? The total energy, yeah. sum of the absolute values. I'm a bit more careful than I was, I guess, in earlier days in reading things entirely right the first time around. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and then I had the kinetic, which was the absolute values of the velocity coordinates. Uh, so um, I'm actually going to make them work on the entire point so I can do uh, you know easier high level stuff where I just handle the moons and give me the values and so uh, these don't necessarily need to be okay so the potential and the kinetic have to be added for all of them and then multiplied together so the energy for all the moons is going to essentially be uh, you know, the P 
Vs and Vs in here, and that's going to be uh, lists unzip of here. It's going to be the potential of the moon and the kinetic of the moon. And we have a very short list of moons, so this is not going to be expensive to do. Uh, where moon is in the moons. And then what they want us to do is multiply these together for the total, which is going to be the lists sum of Bs multiplied by the lists sum of Vs, I believe. So it is not being called, but all right. So, uh, this is going to be the state of the system at that point, and what I want is the energy of the state. And so I compile this one, I run the example, and I get, whoops, 682. Oh, it's not right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's the multiplication of individual ones. Ah. All right, and I sum them up. Bad definition. So it's going to be that times this one. No one zip it. Just the sum of this little thing. And 179, and we're good to go. So I'm going to do this second example now. And this one should be running after a hundred steps. After a hundred steps. So this new string. Because, yeah, I'm going to have this in a trailing position. This one I can comment out and they wanted it after a hundred steps and that should be hopefully still fast yes minus 40 it works so I will do this for my input and a thousand steps for part one so uh, the string is going to be the advent input of day 12 and they wanted it for a thousand steps uh, and that's going to be part one. Twelve seventy-three. Actually, twelve. Yeah, that's fast. Three milliseconds for that one. So, hopefully, the second one we can rebuild on that and not change the entire freaking structure. And that worked. All right, we can go to part two. All right, all this interesting also makes you wonder about the nature of the universe. Does history really repeat itself? Oh, will the moons ever return to a previous day? That's going to be costly. Before all of the moon's position and velocities exactly match a previous point in time. Okay, we're going to need to carry a bit more state in that one. The first example above, okay. So I'm going to reuse that one. And it's going to need that many states to return to the same point in time. Okay, so I'm not going to calculate the energies for all of these, but I'm going to need to carry around all the freaking states. I might need a more efficient way to simulate the universe. Oh no! <laughs> what is it going to be? I can't do it step by step anymore. Ah, oh, crap. I mean, yeah, because those were, how many steps were these? Yeah, and it's going to be costly because I need to also track all of these. So it's going to be states, not just times, because times three milliseconds, and then if I take that and divide it into how many seconds it's going to take, yeah, it's still hell long uh, for that. A more efficient way to simulate the universe. Oh no. And they're not giving you more clues than this. Oh. Bugger. 
I'm going to take this, see what we get in the examples, and maybe, maybe there's some big insight that can be had from looking at the freaking steps and seeing what we get. Because it's not particularly ineffective, but clearly I need to do some kind of, you know, higher level analysis on, oops, on this entire thing. I'm going to just run it 10 times, see what we get, because example oh yeah this is not going to be quite simple I'm going to sort them oh no not here just for the output and see what I get because there is a probability that you can maybe just do great scheduling the velocities do change at each freaking run. Uh, okay. So there is no clear analysis for them that just tells you, yeah, this is going to work or this is not going to work. I'm going to not sort the list, but maybe keep them, um, preserve the order that they had just to figure it out. Uh, because when I'm done, the new tail. I will keep it in the same order at each step of the way. So at least my points should remain the same ones, but. Okay, so like, gotta be honest, I frankly have zero idea on how to do this one. Uh, so I am going to have to do the strategy of taking a break, thinking about it, seeing what I can come up with and figuring it out. And uh, you know, this is the end body problem. They gave the name of that, so maybe, uh, uh, Google .com, and then let's see for if they are anything on you know the end body problem because that's a known algorithm that is super expensive and full of floating points values uh, to know these things and I, I know it's not simple th stuff like it's one of the things that is super freaking annoying and maybe what we have is not exactly the same one because of all the gravitation and everything but Yeah, okay, so that's not, we're not in general. Given the kinds of steady properties, predict their interactive forces and can predict their true orbital move. Yeah. The two body problem is solved as well as the three body problem, but we've got four bodies, right? They were very careful of giving us something for which the problem is not solved. We've got four of them in our input. Okay. Uh, planetary problem, central configuration, and body choreography. So I'm going to go read this, and if I find something that I think applies, I'm going to record back again. Because right now it's just going, it's brute force through research, essentially. Okay, uh, I don't have a solution yet as I'm starting this again, but I decided to, uh, you know, at least try the little brute force approach for it. Uh, just to uh, see what kind of result I get on at least the earliest map I think was supposed to be faster to do and get the basic logic in order for it. So uh, it will be, I'm just going to call it loop and I'm going to start it with an empty map of all the states that have been seen. 
Actually, I need to. Uh, yeah, I need to have the order maintained for all of them. I'm hoping I get the right points for that, but we'll see. We'll see. I will drop the IO format. I will keep the little reverse operation, and I will write the little loop function here that's going to be based on steps and now it's no longer this this is a counter uh, this is the new state I will I'll format that state and quickly validate that it's at least uh, I'm actually this is a second example I already had on this one I will just go back to the early uh, okay uh, here's what I'm doing uh, I want to make sure that my literal reversing of the state that I did on this little try here is actually working how I expect it to work. Because if I don't have stable moons, I have no way to at least make sure that uh, my thing is, either, is ever working in the first place. If I run the example, step 9 should be 5, 3, minus 4, 2, minus 9... Uh, 5, 3, minus 4, 2, minus 9, 3, 0, 8, 4, oops, 0, 8, 4, and 1, 1, 5 right below. The one before then was 5, 2, minus 2, 5, 2, minus 2, 2, minus 7, minus 5, okay, 0, minus 9, 6, 0, minus 9, 6, and 1, 1, 3, and 1, 1, 3. Okay, so that works. My little reversal makes sense. So I'm going to go back through my little looping example here. And here's what I'm going to do with it. So now I've got my state and I've got my, now it's n plus one. And uh, the thing I know is that case, Oh, here I have also, this is going to be my map of all the scene steps I've seen and at which step I've seen it. So that will give me a baseline or very ineffective shit that I can try. And so if I have a state with a counter value, counter, then I will know that uh, I have replicated my state again. And uh, this means that my cycle duration is n minus the counter. Because it's possible that my loop happens halfway through the thing, right? It's not necessarily from the first state of everything. It's if I go back to part two, number of steps before all the moons doesn't exactly match a previous point in time. There is no guarantee that it's the first one of all of them. There could be a sub loop hidden somewhere in the entire thing. Uh, and if it doesn't match in the map, then I will do steps minus one. The map now contains the state with the value of n in it. And that's my loop. And so, oh yeah. This is loop, not steps. So if I try it with the little first example, that was very fast still, 2772. So let's try it with a second example and maybe we can be pleasantly surprised, but I don't believe we will. In the worst case, I'll just let it run while I'm researching or working because I do have a day job to attend to. And yes, this should take a very long amount of time. All right. 
So while this goes on and clearly eats up at my CPU, uh, I'm going to find a clever way to do that search. All right, okay, I think, all right, okay, I think I found uh, the solution for this. Uh, let me walk through you through what I've done before. So uh, I clearly killed the um, example that was taking a long time to run just because, uh, you know, it was extremely uh, CPU intensive and my entire computer was freezing. It was clearly not a good way to do it. So I got dressed, I took a breakfast, brushed my teeth, just changed my mind a little bit. And the thing I did after that was um, I decided to take, you know, the short problem I had, the first example with only uh, a few thousand iterations to find a thing. And I output the map of all the possible solutions sorted by step uh, into a temporary file, which is here. And so I started looking through regular expressions to a bunch of different things. Um, and I first started to say to, to check like is there any loop in these values for different planets and I found out that oh each moon individually kind of happens to loop from time to time uh, but when I started caring to use you know the same steps some of them like this one never loop and so um, I started looking for different patterns like this one works and whatnot and uh, I had the kind of realization that, you know, I should try to look for vertical patterns instead of uh, whatever it is that I have. And so I tried to, you know, build long regular expression in Vim that capture everything. And I managed to uh, make one that kind of works. And here's how it works, right? I'm looking for P5 here, there's a little five here and V3 for the velocity. I'm looking for the first parameter. I got P1 and V minus two, and I'm matching only the X's column because the kind of little realization uh, that this has given me when I tried to look for, you know, vertical patterns instead of just horizontal ones um, was that all of these are only, uh, you know, the X's are only concerned with the X's and the Y's are only concerned with the Y's and the Z's are only concerned with the Z's. So if I can find a loop for each of them uh, as I go, then it should look good. And so when I look for all the patterns in the X's, they loop all the freaking time in this one. And not only that, you can see that as I'm cycling around, like you see the line numbers, they're now in the thousands, two thousand, four thousand. The P column never shifts. So I am finding a smaller cycle here. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to um, ignore these values for this one. Um, I'm going to ignore, yeah, I'm going to assume that it's either I don't care for the mark than a period for a digit and uh, I want to have a minus one and here it's going to be uh, the, regu <laughs> the regular expressions are kind of annoying to do. Uh, what was I saying? It's either negative. I could have, oh, I have speeds in the tens sometimes. I'm going to check on the, uh, I'm going to check instead on the uh, Z axis because the regular expression is going to be easier to do. So I could look for a six uh, and then anything on the line until I get a comma one. And then here's the little cheat that I found because I had to look. I can make a Vim regular expression skip a line by using the backslash underscore period. Then I match into anything until I get uh, the comma three. No, oh, here I go. I will put my comma here to narrow it down. Uh, then I want also on the same line to have another comma three. Anything until the end line break. Anything until I find uh, minus two. Anything I find on minus three, I will put the comma even though it's not required on this. Uh, like this. Oh yeah, I need to match on anything more than once. Then anything again until I get a minus five. 
This is fancy ass regular expressions. N minus one. And now how many times is this cycling? Six three minus two five. Six three minus two five. Yeah. And I got the cycles every three every few hundreds. And so here's the interesting bit. Uh, right. Let me illustrate the little thing that I think should happen with this one. Uh, the thing that I have now is that I'm looking for the entire state, but all my X's, all my Y's, and all my Z's are independent. And if that one has a cycle of, say, 10 entries, this one has a cycle of 5 entries, if that one has a cycle of, uh, yeah, 30 entries, then uh, I will get a full cycle every 30 of them, because that's the least or the smallest common multiple least common smallest common divider is the what we used a few days ago for the steps uh, but this one will tell us like the smallest amount i can multiply them all and get the same result so if that one was you know if that one is two five and three then i know i'm going to get a cycle at uh you know the X's and Y's are going to line up at the 10th cycle, and this one is going to line up with the X's on the 6th cycle, and on this one on the 15th cycle. So, uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, I think it's still going to be 30 for that one. Um, but I'm going to figure that one out to find all my cycles. So, uh, it should be, yeah, two, five, and three. I think, I think I can just multiply them, but there's the, let me get back to my fancy Google. It's not the end body problem. The thing I told myself is that this is way too complex to be, uh, something that they would put in that kind of problem. There has to be a better solution. And that's why I decided to kind of just brute force and look for cycles myself by hand in the little thing until uh you know the right realization took place so um what are we, uh, uh, the least common multiple i think is the term for that one the least common multiple refer to the lowest common multiple and least common divider for two integers a and b don't get an lcm the lcm is the smallest positive integer that is evenly divisible by both a and b so i'm going to need to do it but with three values I'm guessing. So for two integers, yeah, for two and three, it's six, and for six and ten, it's going to be thirty. That's close to what I had. Uh, I'll see. If two or more numbers is the smallest number that is evenly divisible by. Oh, okay. And so I'm going to go look for that little algorithm that is well known. Oh, prime factorization. There has to be, uh, I think there's a way that works with the greatest common divider or something like that. The cake method, the ladder method. Okay. Oh, okay. If I write down your cake layers row. 10, 12, 15, 15. By a prime number, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to work with prime numbers. Prime numbers suck for this thing. I don't want to write a C for that. Um... No, division table. Divide a row of numbers by a prime. No, I don't want prime numbers. All right. Oh, yeah. The greatest common factor. I think this is more like my jam here. A times B for the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of 6 and 10 is 2. And is the same as the aha. Uh -huh. I think this is similar to what I had a few days ago, which was in uh, day 10, I think, longest, yeah. Um, that was the greatest common divider. Is this what they were referring to, the GCD? The GCD, yeah, okay, so I can use that one. That's the method I want to use. Uh, no, I don't want to load a file name, please, okay. Aha, uh -huh. so that's the method I want. 
And so that's going to be, and I'm just going to do it recursively with many of them. So back to day 12, I'm going to do something like LCM of A and B is going to be A times B divided by GCF. And I can probably use integer division here of A and B. And it's, it's GCM for me. I'm going to go grab my G, oh, GCD. That's fine. Okay, I can use that. That's going to be my uh, little measure for that one. Now what I need to do is I've got my state and I've got to build my rows for a given accessor for each of them. So, um, okay, I'm going to keep the case map of but I'm going to look and I'm going to do the calculation many times because the assumption I'm making here is going to be that, um, you know, I'm going to look for the uh, key of X and the key of X for both the value. And those are going to be search keys. I'm going to keep using the map I had and uh, let me explain to you what this is. This is going to be the X loop. And I'm now too long for a single line. So I'm going to at least, you know, take the parsing of the moon and, uh, and just call it moons. I'm not going to parse them all the time. For the initial state, I'm going to be the X loop. Then I'm going to make the Y loop. And I'm going to make the Z loop. Oh, uh, here, that should be X, Y, Y. And then the thing I'm going to have to do is to have the LCD of X loop of, is that the, these come with multiple, not LCD, yeah. A y loop, and then I'm going to take that and calculate this with the Z loop. And I think this should be my answer. So I'm going to try this. Uh, here is going to be the P key and the velocity key. And okay, so here what I'm going to do is I've got my state with all the updated list. And the thing I will want to find is, um, you know, all the elements for each of them that is going to be and this here uh, in case you're not aware is syntax that is going to give me the rank so this is going to give me uh, because my tuple my, my record p is on the form p x y z so what this gives me is um, the first one is giving me one two and three so those are the index the indices to get easy element access so i could get like the uh, all the P's according to my key to be, um, which I can do all of them with, um, the PV's according to my keys. <laughs> this is terrible naming, uh, to be, you know, elements, uh, P key and element V key of my record. Uh, this is going to be the P rec, and this is going to be the V record for P rec and V rec in state. And so what I'm going to use in my value here is going to be the PV keys and the counter. And I'm not going to write the file. I'm just going to return the counter and be done with it. And so this should work. This is no longer this. This is the PV keys at step N. Oh yeah, it's loop four now. And so it's still P key, V key here. And 
let's see what we get for example. Yes, that works. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I, I'm really happy when I find one of these little solutions. Uh, and I don't know if it's like, you know, relative happiness because of how much despair I had when I first decided that I was not good enough to do this. Oh, um, yeah, 924. That's good enough. Okay. So I don't know if that's the, the thing or not, or yeah, programming is a weird, weird thing uh, from that point of view. And they wanted it after how many, oh, they don't care for how many loops, right? It's just find me the first one that exists for this. Uh, let's, 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 let's do the full uh, race. Ooh, that's not fast. Okay, that's 1.4 seconds. It could be better, uh, but I'm going to see if this is good first before I try to maybe optimize it to go under one second. I like things to be fast. That worked. Okay, that's good. So um, the thing that I believe I need to do next to make it faster to go better than one second is to essentially reduce the number of loops I have to run this through, right? Because the problem is that I'm doing the big busy loop three times, and this is not something I want to do. So here's a little fun one. I'm going to put them in a list. And update all of them. And this is going to be where the clever programming takes place. Like this was clever problem solving in terms of finding the right thing, but this is where it's going to be clever. And I don't know how to explain it in words right away. Uh, I'm just hoping that this idea is going to work. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loop through all the keys at once and maintain three maps at once. But every time I find a loop, I drop a map. And I instead, I'm going to return them in a list. So it's going to be like the A loop, because I don't know if it's going to be X, Y, or Z. And the B loop and the C loop are going to be returned by this loop function. And I'm going to start my counter at zero all the same. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my moons. My little code indenter does not indent the way I like it to do. And what I'm going to do is A loop, B loop, and C loop. And now the loop function is going to be modified to use all the keys and all the maps. And I am going to maintain the order is going to be imported. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that format and maintain the map along with the record definition. Oops, not in this one. This one is no longer valid. We kill this one. No longer want to deal with it. I'm not updating that one. I know it works. So I'm going to maintain the map along with the tuple for each of them. And look at them in the right order. And so the loop, where's my loop function now? The loop is going to be, the keys and the maps are all going to be the same. Uh, and here I'm going to uh, update maps. That's going to be, I'm going to call it the key maps. The key maps with the state. And that can give me uh, found search. Those are going to be the two types of results I can have. Either the map is complete or it's not. And okay. And loop here, it's still going to be n, but when I'm done here with this, I already in the empty list because I'm now recursing on the search instead of research instead of just recursing on the counter. Um, and I know this might be a bit hard to follow because I'm updating all the things at once, but this is how I'm thinking right now. I'm just doing all the things at the same time in my mind. So, and then the loop is purely going to be uh, you know, found 
I'm going to return the list, and then I'm going to loop this little bit here, n plus 1, and, oops, destroyed more than I thought, search on the state. And this is now my new loop. And how I do the update maps is going to be very similar to what I had just before. So when I'm done, uh, this will need to be a tail recursive function. So key maps, uh, the list of states, and then I will update maps to key maps, lists, and here we go. And what's going to be interesting with this approach is that I will, in theory, be able to support as many buddy as as many buddies as required on this. So when this one is done, I don't care for the list anymore. I return the accumulator, and we're done. Then when I have a map, I will have you know the key for the positions, the pos key. I will have the velocity key, and I will have the map for this one and then the rest of them and then I have my list of all the rest and my accumulator is uh, found and search okay so that's my state and here what I'm going to do is exactly what I was doing in my old loop which I deleted god damn it um, I think it was yeah it was uh, I'm just going to use this state to be element of pos key of x. I know it's a moon. Element val key of x for all the x's in the list. And that gives me the little state for as many buddies as I have in this. Then case map of state. Oh, no. I need to also maintain the, um, the end loop for the thing. I'm going to put it in the first position here. First position here because that's the value I need to return. Uh, here I don't care. Here I'm going to return the end position. And that's going to be, uh, if I found it, then I have the result to put in the found lists and the search. This is just a bit longer than it needs to be, but I want this to be under one second as a result. Oh, that's not an... Oops. That's going to be this, and if it's not been found, then... Uh... Yeah, that's right. I I'm going to maintain two different states. I was wondering about the types because I need to return the map, but I can do that safely. Uh, by returning now map of state is oh uh, I need to also return the pos key the bell key because this is what I'm passing into the other state my recursion is a bit all over the place but at this time at this point I don't necessarily mind and I put it in there as spotted before into the search list all right, so let's see how that works. Oops, not a good sign. Map of state, why is it worrying about this thing? No, oh. map syntax, good thing to use in a map. Update maps T isn't used, you are right. Uh, then I need to actually call, damn it, uh, this is going to be my new accumulator because I don't want to write the function clause twice. So I'm going to update 
maps and t lists new ack. All right. This is exploding. I called it on both elements at once. That's true. Uh, it's not X. It's going to be P and V. But at least I made it this far into the recursion before finding an issue. Oops. I'm guessing it's worse than it was. Oh. Oh yeah, the result is not uh, the result, it's n minus the result, because I'm in a loop. It's not... <laughs> this is disappointing, it's even slower than it was. It used to take 1.4 seconds and now it's at 3 seconds, so my loop... <laughs> uh, I just made things worse. All right. Let's go back to the old solution. I don't know why this one was faster. I'm I'm kind of positive that this should be better. Maybe because I have more maps to up No, I have as many maps to update in the grand scheme of things. And my found could it be the plus plus there? Yeah, I'm probably maintaining a lot of empty. That's the that's probably the thing. Case found of empty just do the freaking loop. And I'm gonna see if the problem is my kind of little accumulator I have here. And if not, then found because I'm probably creating a very, very large call stack on these. And then that means more garbage collection runs and more of everything, and that could slow down things a whole lot because my com my recursion is not effective. Okay, 1348, 1.3. 1 uh, we just shaved 100 milliseconds with that. Not even that much. God. Okay. So, the lesson for that one is I have not found a good way to optimize it to be much faster than it was, so I'm going to reverse to the other code that was a crap load cleaner and easier to read. Um, I'm guessing that there's the roughly same amount of work to do. And uh, let's go here. Okay, I'm Killing the example still, that's good. I'm going to go back to my clean code. Clean code. Here, 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 here. P2. Okay. I'm going to destroy that one. But here's um, another thing that maybe will be uh, also an improvement is that these keys I can use to... Right now, the thing I'm doing when I'm update, updating the Vs and updating the Ps... In my loop, I'm still updating all of them all the time. Um, and it's possible that, you know, in my loop function for update V and update P, oops, update P and update V, I'll just pass them a new variant where I'll just give them update the key and the key K and the V K. This one will need both keys. They will both need both keys. And the thing I'm going to try is that if the cost is actually in calculating all the small things that I have, uh, I'm going to do it cheaper by using the keys. Oh, God. Okay. Ah, uh, Screw this. You know what? I solved the problem. It's more than an hour. I know how I could optimize this. I'm just... I've got work to do. And work things to do. So I'm going to bring it back to this level. And call it a day. Knowing when to quit is a good thing. I've solved the freaking thing anyway. Now, it was a decent improvement to some extent. A few bits of a milliseconds. Uh, but that's it. Day 12 is done. There's no need to optimize more than we need to do. 
tomorrow is going to be day 13 on a Friday the 13th, and I'm sure it's going to be horrific. Uh, but yes, thanks for watching, and have a good day.